Hello everyone, welcome to this YouTube session. In this session, I'm going to be talking about the top concerns you have currently, whether you're somebody who's thinking of applying for a skills assessment, is waiting for a nomination, this video is for you. So let's get started with the first concern. The first concern applicants for Australia migration have is do I need to increase my EOI score in order to better my chances of getting an invitation to apply for a nomination? The answer to that is yes and no. So look at it this way. If you're looking for a 190 nomination, that of course is competitive and usually uh, for most of the occupations, except for of course some trade level occupations, Preference is given to those with a higher EOI score. However, if you're looking at the 491 nomination, usually 65 points and six bands in each section suffice. Now, if you notice uh, in the state of South Australia, it is clearly mentioned uh, for the uh, occupations that are currently eligible for offshore nomination that those with higher ranking EOIs will be selected. So now that is creating some sort of a fear psychosis where people think that probably, you know, we need to have a very high score in order to have some chances of being invited. Whereas we have received invitations for nominations for applicants with just 65 or 70 points and six bands in each section. So that is for four. And the next question is that Priority processing is a route available for WEDIS's occupation. So is it really beneficial to route the application to priority processing? Okay, so my very candid answer to that is as follows. Uh, see, a lot of people prefer priority processing because they've been, uh, you know, kind of uh, very demoralized by the time the WEDIS's had been taking in the past, it's been taking painfully long to uh, finalize the applications, whereas now the West Wednesday's processing time has returned to the normal standard processing times, which is about four months or so. A risk associated with routing your application through the priority processing is that uh, the skills assessors have just 10 business days to finalize your occupation. And in these 10 days, they like to ensure that whatever documentation is required is provided immediately. So that can be a little cumbersome. Secondly, interviews are usually held with applicants who are opting for the priority processing and usually the interviews can be very technical in nature. Uh, despite you being a pro at uh, your work and your uh, nominated occupation, you could be asked some questions you probably would not really make much out of and you will end up getting a negative skills assessment. So when you have to go for a reassessment, that has to be a, through a standard processing. Therefore, I only recommend priority processing for very limited occupations. For most of the occupations, I do not think priority processing can really benefit you. Rather, you could uh, probably be looking at a negative assessment because you have to face a very, very stringent uh, interview uh, with the very system. Now, the next question is that, yes, this um, big question about and this disillusionment with the quotas. Despite uh, the Australian migration plan being set at 190,000 um, quota for the year 23-24, and despite the fact that Australia has not really increased the quota for any other visa, their focus still remains on skilled migrant visas. Obviously, applicants are a little disappointed and bewildered. They're very, very confused as to why the quotas allocated to the state are so small in numbers. So let me tell you that uh, these are things that are taken care of by the DHA. Obviously, things may not make sense to you right now. They will make sense in the longer run. Do not be disappointed by the fact that the current quota allocation is very less. 
please remember that they have 190,000 seats available for this migration year and they will come around to fill in that. Lastly, I want to talk to you about the skills assessment, especially with reference to the three assessment bodies, that is the WEDESIS, the ACS and the Engineers Australia. So the internal processing, the internal criteria for processing the applications have, are continually undergoing revisions. And we have seen a lot of change in the supporting documents requested and the kind of uh, evidence they need in order for you to get a positive assessment. We can sense very clearly that now the focus of the assessment body is shifting to quality applications and they are not willing to give positive assessments to any applicant whose application is kind of average. Therefore, with time, we will see some documents becoming mandatory, which are kind of optional at this time. Now, let me tell you here that um, just to give you an example of how things change with time, there was a time when university lectures did not need to provide any research publications in order to get a positive skills assessments. Now, not only do they need to provide international research publications, the publications also need to meet a certain standard, uh, failing which they would get a negative assessment. So we can see this transition, we can see this shift for various other occupations. So probably applying for a skills assessment today will be a good idea rather than waiting because in another two to three months time, there could be a lot of requirements which are currently not there. So you should consider making uh, moving uh, for a skills assessment right at this time. So I think I've taken up, covered up all the questions that I've been getting for from the clients. Um, I hope uh, you've benefited from these. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write to us or call us. We'll be happy to uh, assist you. Until next time, bye-bye and take care.